So, welcome. Um, I'm Leah Giles-Peters. I'm actually the State Librarian here at this fabulous building. Um, you're at the session, Raising the Bar, Does It Take a Whole Community to Educate a Child? Um, and it's my... Abs well, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're gathered here today. Um, this is a very special place on the Brisbane River, Kirilpa Point. It was a place, a meeting place, a sharing place for Aboriginal people and we continue that tradition today. I'd very much like to um, welcome Waverley Stanley. We're delighted to have you here and we're even more delighted to have Robbie and Tanil and Shaquille, Shaquille here today who are going to, two um, people are going to talk to, two of the students. And welcome to each and every one of you. We are delighted to have you here at the Ideas Festival, but especially at this session. Um, just a few words about Waverley. Waverley grew up in Queensland's Mergen and Sherberg district. He is descended from the Waka Waka people and identifies with the Burungam people of Chinchilla. In 1979, Waverley's primary school teacher, Rosemary Bishop, at the Mergen State School, took a big step on his behalf. She negotiated a secondary school scholarship for him at Toowoomba Grammar School, a private boarding school for boys. Waverley's own boarding school experience started him on the Yulari journey. Through his unwavering vision and passion, Yulari's work is now supported nationally by individuals, companies, philanthropic foundations, government departments and many fantastic volunteers. Waverley established Yulari to bring about long-term generational change for indi Indigenous children. Through Waverley's efforts, Yulari is now a thriving not-for-profit organisation offering scholarships to Indigenous children from remote, rural and regional communities across Australia. In this session, we'll, Waverley will share his experience of the rewards and challenges of this journey to date, the approach he took to working with local Indigenous communities and the benefits these communities receive as their children achieve success in tertiary, tertiary education. Welcome, Waverley. Thank you, Leah. Um, before I begin, I pay my respects to the traditional owners, uh, to the Turrbal and Jago nations. Thank you very much for your time too. I know it's a Friday afternoon. It be, uh, wouldn't be too easy just sitting, you know, trading places for sitting along the Southeast Freeway or something like that. So I thank you very much for your time. But um, what I'm going to do today is just give you a snapshot of, of Yallery, um, what we're trying to do in regards to our scholarship program. I've got two young, young people that are going to talk about their experience, um, both at boarding school and now after, after boarding school. I'm going to show you a DVD and then, um, and then take questions after that. So that, that'll be the, uh, the whole focus for the afternoon. But um, I'll now just want to just uh, play a DVD. And you know, as I say, uh, you know, a picture paints a thousand words. This is uh, the story of our children and um, just their words and their impact on, uh, on what boarding school education does for them. So I'll share this with you. I'll give you a snapshot of what the gallery is all about in regards for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I'll ask um, Tanil to, to jump up and share his experience at um, St. Margaret's and then Robbie at the University of Queensland right now. Thank you. There we go, dramatic pause. Hi, I'm a Nariman girl. And I come from Yadalin, Nariman country. And what I said was, um, I am an Aboriginal girl and I come from Yarram community, six hours from capital. Um, Nan got a phone call from Waverley and I was at school just in class and then I saw Nan and then she said, oh, you got in and I was selected. When I heard from mum, I just jumped and screamed and everything. Yeah, because I was very excited to get it. It was kind of like a shock feeling, like you're having a heart attack. That's how I actually felt. It was just, I was so amazed. I was just stoked. I, I didn't realise that it happened and about 10 seconds later, I figured out what I read and I almost started crying because I was tears of joy getting into that school. I 
went down to um, Scotch and I had a tour. Me and my nan and my uncle, we got to meet the principal. Some of the things that could hit me hard, like homesickness and missing my family and stuff like that. And he told me around all this massive school and the love that the death. It was so big, the swimming pools, the oval, the music centre. Oh, well, I'm not a top A student. I'm like in the middle because it was quite different to what I did down here. So, but I think by next year I'll know everything, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> so, you think you're catching up? Yeah. Yeah. How, how hard was it to catch up? Oh, it wasn't that hard. Like, to get, like, the routine was different. But then now it's like, yeah, whatever. I can do that. Sort of. You feel really proud, you know, when people ask you, oh, where's the grandchildren, you know, how are they going? And you can proudly say, you know, oh, they're going to Adelaide for boarding school. And then when you tell them, oh, it's, they're going on a scholarship, and they say, oh, congratulations, you know. They get really happy for you, and it makes me feel happy that I've brought them up the right way to be able to get this opportunity. When I first went there, I looked in the in a dining hall, it looked a bit like Harry Potter. Yeah, and it's very cold down there for me, so, but I'm territory tough. It, it's a lot different actually, because it's, because apparently Glennie has a really good reputation of academics, and the work here is really hard, but I'm getting through it. A lot of assignments and exams, but I'm getting good grades now, so I'm getting used to it, so it's good. Even if they don't come to schools like this, just like, study hard. And after that, just finish year 12, that's the main thing. Get a good job. Be famous. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, well, I want to know what happens when I finish school, whether it'll be a, a good, like, whether I have a perfect, oh, I'm not saying a perfect, I'm saying like a good life, do, like, make my family proud or just probably be in nothing, like nobody, do nothing with my life, but I don't want to do that. <sighs> so. I, this is what I think. I think Waverley is trying to, change the name Aboriginal because if you like talk about Aboriginal to white people they might just turn around and think oh Aboriginal guys homeless and all that homeless well I think Yallery is just trying to change that to yeah to something good 
on other people what they think of us or what they view us. So that, that, that's a, a thumbnail sketch on, uh, from, our, from our children's point of view in regards to what we're doing with Yallery. So I'll just give you a bit of a, bit of a background and then I'll, I'll hand over to, to Neil and to Robbie. Um, so j just only from my experience at, at being at Trumbull Grammar School, I, I'm originally from Mergen. Um, I'm the eldest of seven children. Um, I'm the only one out of my family that went away to boarding school. And uh, my mother and father had a grade five and a grade eight education. So my opportunity at being at Trumbo Grammar School was was given to be my, my grade seven teacher, Mrs. Rosemary Bishop. So uh, without that experience, and I had a, I had a wonderful experience at Toowoomba Grammar School, and, and I'm happy to say I've got you know, a couple of mates. I just jumped out of a lift. Uh, I've got Scott, who's working for me now, uh, and then uh, jumped out of a lift uh, only about, oh, about 15 minutes ago and then run into another old Toowoomba Grammar School old boy. And um, they're the experiences that I've had at Toowoomba Grammar School. And it was a burning ambition of mine, and uh, you, know, you talk about ideas, and I'd come up with this crazy idea um, about uh, all these hairbrain ideas, and I think this is the one that stuck because my wife Lou, um, with her pointy shoes, said, "You know, this this might stick, and, and we'll do something about educating Indigenous children." So, our whole focus is to is to provide Indigenous children from regional, rural, and remote communities to give them the best opportunity of of education at the, at the leading boarding schools throughout Australia. So we started with uh, three children in in 2006, with one boy at Toowoomba Grammar School and two girls at the Glennie School. And now we've got something like 180 children in 31 schools throughout Australia. So our, our focus is to, is to provide scholarships for Indigenous children by um, fundraising, by working in partnership with corporate companies, philanthropic bodies and foundations throughout Australia, where our, our focus is to, is to provide generational change for Indigenous children. And I, I think, you know, living in communities, and um, I've travelled uh, extensively throughout Australia, I think for Aboriginal and Torres Strait people, um, it's a bit like the definition of insanity, doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. And the education we talk about with these children and, and, and Robbie and Shaquille and Tanila are, are, are no different. All we're trying to do is to give Indigenous children the opportunity of something more, of something better out there, and access to quality education. So it doesn't matter whether you live in, in Manangrida, whether you live in Sherbrooke, Warabinda, Palm Island, whether you live in Walgett, whether you live in um, Burke, Brewarana, all it is is just access to quality education. But that quality education is about having the access to qu that quality education but then doing something with it. So our strategy is to, is to select children from around Australia to give them uh, the opportunity of being at, at good schools. But the education for our Indigenous children is not only found in the four walls of a classroom. The education is these two young people are going to do later on is about the education of speaking in front of people like yourselves. That's an education. The education of you know, jumping on a plane from uh, Halls Creek to Darwin and, or, uh, or going from Halls Creek to Kununurra, Kununurra to Darwin, Darwin to Adelaide. That's an education. Being able to, to talk with uh, sponsors or, or, or go to a fundraising dinner where you've got you know, 750 of your closest friends <laughs> and then being able to talk in front of them. That's an education. So the long-term strategy for us is to work with Indigenous communities, with families, with corporate companies, philanthropic bodies and foundations throughout Australia to, to make sure that we are going to change this generation of, for children around Australia. So we select children by, by having a, an application process for, for children to apply, families to apply. Our applications close on May 31 and then we will interview children all around Australia. So my wife and I, Lou, we started in our house at, at Southport just as an idea. And uh, this idea stuck, and it, it's just really about saying, you know, if, it's a bit like that quote from Gandhi, if you want to be, if you want to see the change in the world, you know, do something about it. And for us, as, as an organisation, and, and I've got staff members here now, you know, with Scott, Nicole, Lou and Sharon, you know, our staff around Australia, and there's something like 18 of us now around Australia, that we are all trying to say, you know, let's do something. But that doing is, it's a bit like that Nike ad, you know, just doing it. It's a bit like, you know, when you eat an elephant, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So how do you change a generation? One child at a time, one educated Indigenous man, or one educated in Aboriginal woman at a time. And that's what we're going to do. I made a commitment um, two weeks ago on this Friday, Friday night two weeks ago, 
where that I was going to stay the course for Yallery to, to assist 1,000 Indigenous children get the access to, to quality education and finish Grade 12 around Australia. That's my commitment to Indigenous people in this country. And what we are trying to do through Yallery is, is not be reliant on the, on the federal government to say that they're going to close the gap on us between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and the rest of Australia. I'm an Aboriginal man, I've been 43 years of age, even though my, I have a few, few more grey hairs than everybody else in the room. Or maybe not in some, but I won't, <laughs> won't point anywhere. Like over here, and you see young, uh, young Gwyn. So yeah, if, you, if you had grey hair, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But, but what we're trying to do, instead of about closing the gap, we are going to do something strategic. And uh, it's really about working with, with people throughout Australia to say, let's make a difference, let's do that. But this is just one strategy that we're trying to do in a host of, of uh, a lot of people that are doing stuff and uh, you know, trying to make some positive changes in private schools, in public schools and state schools throughout Australia. And we as an organisation have, a, have an opportunity to work with children not only at boarding schools but then work on to, into universities, into children because we as an organisation are going to be judged what our children do after school. And that access to quality education is about our children, once they finish school, is about making a contribution back to Australia, back to their communities. Because we want to educate our children where they can go back to their communities and be the CEO of their community, be the mayor in their communities, be the town planners. You know, I have a dream of, um, you know, in 15 years' time or 20 years' time that, you know, we will have a, a number of Indigenous children sitting in corporate Brisbane, sitting in corporate Sydney or Melbourne or Adelaide, so whereas now, for us, this is not a novelty anymore for Indigenous children to be at private schools around Australia. It is not a novelty now that children are graduating out of boarding school and making a difference, not only at university, but will make a difference in life. That's what we're really doing. So from an idea from there, it's about, I suppose, garnishing all the support that we've got right now, working together with like-minded people to say, let's make a difference, let's make a change. If we are going to see some changes in this world, it's going to be at our hands. And we as an organisation in partnership with corporate companies, philanthropic bodies and foundations, families, Indigenous community are doing just that. So we raise all the money ourselves through, through, the, through the corporate support. But at the end of the day is that we are talking about children's lives here and the education of young people where we give them the skills to not only succeed at their boarding schools right now, but give them the skills that will transfer them into later life. That's what we're really doing with Yallery. So that one idea where I was given an opportunity uh, from Mrs Bishop, and I'm very, very grateful to her because if it wasn't for her, I certainly would not be standing up here today. And the opportunities I've had to meet so many wonderful people and, uh, and to be uh, exposed to so much more than just what life, because back in Mergen, the only, only jobs I had in Mergen was either the butter factory, the meatworks, the council. And that was it. And I left home in 1985, but Mergen is still home. So that, that's just a snapshot of what, what we're trying to do with Yallery. We had, uh, so currently right now, we've got 180 children in 31 schools. We had 16 children graduate, uh, 19 children graduate last year in grade 12. Out of those 19, we've got 10 at universities throughout Australia right now. We've got 16 young children graduating in grade 12 this year. So where we are today with Yallery is because of the support of our staff, um, the support of uh, many good friends, supporters throughout Australia, and our our focus is to, is to work together to bring about a positive change for the present but also in the future for, for Indigenous people throughout Australia. So what I'd like to do now is, that, that's, um, I'm happy to take questions a little bit later on. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tanil. Tanil's a Year 9 student at uh, St Margaret's in Brisbane and Robbie's a, a first year at, uh, at the University of Queensland. They're going to share their experience uh, under, a, under a Yallery scholarship and then um, we'll sit down and, and take some questions after that, if that's all right. So I'd like to introduce you to uh, Tanil Lawton from Charleville. Thank you. Good evening. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge and give respect to the traditional owners of the land in which we meet tonight. I give respect to the elders past and present and also my own elders. My name is Tania Lawton. I originally come from Charleville, southwest Queensland. I am a descendant of the Bidra traditional owner tribe. Our claim area encompasses the significant sites from Carnarvon Gorge up to Aramek across to Ada Vale, Orgothala and Charleville. 
I am currently boarding and attending St Margaret's Anglican Girls' School, Brisbane, Ascot. It is my second year of boarding and being away from home, but with the help and support by school, Yallery and, my, Yallery and my family, I have achieved greatly. Being chosen to attend St Margaret's has been a great opportunity to greater education at what I want to become when I'm older. I have enjoyed making heaps of friends as well. Being on the Yallery Scholarship Program has really opened my culture to who I am and to stand up for all Indigenous children to tell them to live their dreams by ha having an opportunity to do so. We could not have done it without... Oh, the Yallery... <laughs> by having an opportunity to do so. The Yallery workers and, of course, Waverley and Lou... Lou, we could not have done it without you, giving us so many opportunities and many more to achieve. Thank you. As well as going to school, we also get to meet all the other Yallery students on holidays when Yallery puts activities together. I believe this gives us a better understanding of learning about different cultural aspects and meeting more Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander kids wanting a dream to live. Indigenous kids on the scholarship come from all over Australia in our school holidays, we enjoy meeting up at the most respected or royal, play, royal landmarks in Australia. Year 8 and 9 go to a camp at a different boarding school each time so they can get, a, get used to being away from home and the experience of what it is like at a boarding house environment. Both Year 9 boys and girls also go on a camp to the famous Uluru and a tour around some of the biggest places in Central Australia, Alice Springs. Year 10, 11 and 12 go into camps that help them leadership and help them try and understand what they want to become when they grow up. Some years we are able to have the Yallery, all the Yallery children meet up in one place for a few days, which is great. We have so much fun. Every school area, such as Queensland, ACT, New South Wales, everywhere, there is a Yallery support officer that will take us out on leave to see how we are adapting to the new environment and people. It gives us time out on the boarding house and is very fun and is lots of fun. What Yallery has provided for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children across Australia is so beneficial and evident in closing the gap to ensure Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children have better education outcomes. At this moment, nothing needs to be improved or removed. As a privileged Yaller scholar, Yallery scholar in my second year, I can only wish to express my thanks to Waverley and Lou and all the Yallery staff, major sponsors, St Margaret's Anglican Girls School, my family, for enabling me to achieve my goals to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you, Tanil. And I'd just now like to introduce uh, Robbie Reckenberg. Robbie's uh, originally from Thursday Island and is now, uh, and was at St Augustine's last year, is now at um, University of Queensland. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, good evening, Ms Waverley Stanley and ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we gather here tonight. My name is Robbie Reckenberg and I'm currently studying at the University of Queensland as a result of the Yalari program. When I was first asked to speak here tonight, I thought to myself, what message am I trying to convey here? Is it a point of gratitude or an example of perseverance? A sense of hope or a message of grasping opportunities? I soon realised that it is in fact a mixture of these things, along with others, that not only allowed me to be here today, but also allowed me to be able to experience different facets of life. However, firstly, I'd like to speak briefly about my life thus far. Now, I was brought up on a little island in the Torres Strait with no more than 300 people. The educational system was below average, socioeconomic standards were low. Ladies and gentlemen, the harsh reality was that the members of my generation were on a misled path to unemployment. However, I was lucky enough to have a family that strived to give both me and my younger siblings the best possible chance at a brighter future. I completed my primary education on the island and then went on to complete year 12 at St Augustine's College in Cairns. Amidst my secondary education, I was lucky enough to receive a scholarship with the Indigenous Youth Leadership Program 
in conjunction with you, Larry. That will enable me to complete my senior years at St. Augustine's. However, this was only the beginning of what was going to be a life-changing experience for me. I had always had every, every intention of furthering my education at university, but the reality, particularly financially, stood that it probably wasn't going to happen. Regardless of what I thought, my fortune was about to take a turn. The prospect of receiving a scholarship, not only to study at the secondary level, but also for university education, was almost unheard of. Yet Waverley and the team at Yulari saw something in me that led them to believe that it was wo I was worthy of such honour, that I had the ability to become a leader within my community, and better yet, amongst my people. And for this, I'll be forever grateful. I know that there are a lot of children out there, particularly Indigenous children, that love to have the opportunity that I have. The opportunity to experience the life of a university student. The opportunity to experience things they might only see on TV. The opportunity to a better life. Yulari aims to bring about a generational change through first-class education, a change that will see some of the nation's future leaders being of Indigenous heritage. I'd like to re refer to a film I recently watched, Dead Poets Society. The film is about an Englishman, Professor John Keating, who inspires his students to live, live, live a life of poetry and to seize the day. Keating challenges his students to change their lives of conformity, to make their own paths in life. Now you might be wondering how this is any correlation with tonight. But to me, I see this film as a wonder, wonderful re reflection of the mission that Ilari has set out to achieve. Now I am an indigenous boy who was exposed to the stere stereotypical behavior indi of indigenous men. Led to believe that I had no other option in life but to conform to society's norms. Ilari, like Professor Keating, inspired me to challenge this conformity and make my own path in life. Keating uses the now famous Latin phrase, carpe diem, which literally means seize the day. Which leads me to another important lesson that Yulari has taught me, to make the most of my opportunities. I come from an average family with two younger siblings, a mother and a father, and I stand here today as an ambassador for the indigenous youth of our country. Like Yulari and Prof Professor Keating, I too want to see the change in the attitude of our youth, and how may I do this? It's relatively simple, provide a path led by one of our own that Indigenous youth can follow in order to lift our culture out of the burdens of stereotypes and to teach them that anything can be achieved if you put your mind to it. In conclusion, I'd like to leave you with a line from the famous Robert Frost poem, The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one less travelled, and that has made all the difference. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure um, there's lots of questions that you would like to ask Waverley, Tanil, or Robbie, and we're going to move up to the front and um, have a conversation. Happy to take any questions, anyone? Thank you very much. Oh. Waverley, what does Yalari mean? Uh, Yalari means child in Birigaba language. So the name given to me by um, Grandfather Blake, he goes from some farm island. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much for that. Um, Robbie, first of all, Dead Poets is one of my all-time favourite movies. Absolutely, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested to know what uh, field of um, study you're in and, Tanil, what your... Um, your career goals are? Oh, well, I'm at the moment I'm currently doing a Bachelor of Applied Science majoring in Nutrition Science and hopefully in the future I'd like to extend that into Physiotherapy or, or some sort of field like that and sort of take it back to the community and see how I can help out sort of being more of a, more a leader or something like that. Um, at the start um, in Year 9 it's just the uh, early stages of what I want to become but in my future years, I'd like to achieve in my um, journalism and science, but at the moment, I'm not quite sure, so. <laughs> oh, I was just, um, thank you for that. I was just wondering, 
Firstly, how much is uh, one scholarship? Are they all the same, or what's one? How much is one scholarship, and what are the different ways that you're going about um, raising that money to for scholarships? All right. So it, for us, it costs us uh, with, with our supporters twenty thousand dollars a year. So if you're given given the um, the cost of a, a scholarship at boarding school, so it's from fifteen thousand dollars to forty three thousand dollars a year. Um, so that that's what we raise as and, and so we, with the support of our supporters is twenty thousand dollars, but it starts off with say six hundred dollars a year, which is pocket money. You know, so fifteen hundred dollars for um, laptops or for the purchase of uniforms. But um, I suppose for us, uh, you know, five or six years of of uh, our scholarship is is a, is a worthy investment for something for the future. Then. Um, when I go back home, uh, I usually, everyone knows me and it's kind of simple to go back in as I, um, I did my primary schools at St. Margaret's and I was also a school captain and I did many achievements at the Outback and I just, every time I walk down the street, I always get congratulated on how well I'm doing at boarding school and all the achievements, so I fit in perfectly. <laughs> Oh no, definitely not. Not not in a, from a disappointment point of view. I think it's um, you know, just to get to grade twelve. Like some of our children are from families where they, they you know, their mums and dad might need to finish grade nine. So it's certainly not a disappointment, and that's the same for a number of children that that may not have finished our our, our, our scholarship or finished grade twelve in particular. But I don't see it as a disappointment or a negative or anything like that. I think it's we've exposed children to something more about life, and I think at the uh, the most that we can do as an organisation is to support all these children both at boarding school and, and still follow them through all the way. Um, and for the children the, the children that finished last year, you know, we've got some that are at, at nursing right now, some are in traineeships and some are, some are employed. So I think the, the biggest thing is, uh, is what we say to our children is, you know, don't go back home and sit on CDP. So for people that don't know what CDP is, just like Wizard for the Gold program. So if you, if you want to get a, a grade 12 education, you know, do something with it. You know, go back and do something, whether it's in your community where you live right now. And we've been very strategic where uh, all of our boarding schools, we also have a university in the same town, like, you know, Brisbane here with a host of universities like Armadale, where we've got the Armadale School and Presbyterian Ladies College at Armadale, and we've also got a university in New England. So strategically, it was about, you know, offering choices where children can make an educated choice about what they want to do after school. And if they want to be a rock star, well, they can be a rock star. <laughs> but they've got a good education about, about it also. But I think it's just about being exposed to so much more. And, and what we're trying to, what we really have done is we've, we've given, taken the blinkers off our, from our children and say, you know, you, there's a big wide world out there that you can be a part of. And that world is not only just past the, the community, uh, the boundary of your community, whether it's in Queensland, New South Wales or Western Australia. There's a big wide world out there that you can be a part of. And uh, you're going to be judged by who you are as a person and not by the colour of your skin, and that's what we want our children to be. Yeah. What was the starting figure for the way that you know, started the program? Starting figure for... <coughs> oh, yes, OK. So starting yeah. figure for the number of children when we started? Yes. Yeah, we started with three children in 2006. 2006, mm. and now what's it, 160? 180 now, yeah. 180. Mm. Oh, that's terrific. That's very impressive. Yeah, so now it, it's been good, but, you know, where we are today as an organisation is because of a lot of good support that we've had along the way, and I think it's uh, the partnership, but, but it's mainly the, the children that are that are, are performing, and that's, that's what it's really about. And are you the only organisation that's doing this, or is Noel Pearson involved in a very similar type of program? Yeah, no Noel's got a, a program called the Higher Expectations Program, and he's in one year older than ours. And Noel's program is specifically for Cape York, mm -hmm. and we've we've got a, a great relationship with that. And there's other organisations throughout Australia that are doing the same same initiative. But I think it's really about saying, you know, we're all in the in the business of educating and empowering children, 
and it doesn't matter whether they go to private schools, public schools or, or state high schools around Australia, it's about giving this generation the best opportunity of making something more. And in, in my case, like, you know, I'm the eldest of seven children and, you know, we've all finished grade 12 <coughs> and uh, my sister's uh, a teacher of a Western Cape College in Luther. So it's really about just, and, and same with the children here, like Robbie and, and Tanil and Shaquille. Uh, the only difference between this children and this generation and my generation and previous generations is educational opportunities. So in the future, when we go to Wallaroo, we may see some of your students. I mean, uh, as you know, Wallaroo has been taken over by the Indigenous uh, Corporation. The resort. Oh, the resort. Yeah, oh, right. So Sorry. I'm, I'm saying not that, that educated. Sorry. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I, okay. I think the, the biggest thing is that uh, is um, with, the, with an education like this, and I, I think it's just about choices that... You know, if you've got a dream or a goal, you know, and you have the courage to pursue it, that's what it's really about. And I think there's no barriers that can hold people back, you know. It's, it's just saying, you know, whatever you want to be, whatever you want to do, wherever you want to go, you know, you've got nothing to hold you back from now on. Yeah, and uh, particularly if you have the infrastructure, it, particularly in the tourist area for management and so on, mm -hmm. it, it, it obviously will come, there's no doubt about it, that people can return up there to... Uh, resorts and places like that and uh, seek the management positions out and take them on, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, I think mm. uh, I think it's about empowering people to, to take their rightful place, uh, whether it's in corporate Brisbane or Sydney or Melbourne or, or going back to back to your communities as an enterprise. And, you know, there's a lot of... There's an entrepreneurial spirit within Indigenous people and communities. And I think uh, um, where people can say, you know, if they've got the skill factor with it, but it comes back to education. Maybe at, at, a, at a resort like Uluru or Yalara or something like that, why you don't see many Aboriginal and Torres people working at those resorts is because of the educational qualification of certain mm -hmm. people in those positions. Mm -hmm. But now, once you with an education, you can go into any job that you want. It's just about having the courage to pursue it. And uh, and I think uh, we, with that, then you know we take over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know okay. Terrific. Thank you very much. No worries. Um, I want. I wanted, if I might make a comment, congratulations, Waverley and the children. I think Thank it's you. an outstanding program. Um, I, I uh, think it's wonderful taking the blinkers off, whether it's Indigenous children <coughs> or, or non-Indigenous children, but it, that's a wonderful thing. And um, my own experience is that the Yallery scholarships are changing the perception of Indigenous people, which is wonderful, very positive in our society. Just wonder what feedback you get from the Indigenous community mm -hmm. about the, uh, the Yallery scholarships and um, do, do the Indigenous community feel that it's positive or do the kids get some pushback, you know, oh, you're not cool or... Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Thanks for that. But I, I think really it's, it's ju just a choice still. It's a choice for, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children and same with Robbie and Tanil and Shaquille's mum and dad. It's really a choice for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander families to be educated away from home. And so with that choice comes responsibility and also sacrifices. So um, boarding school is not for every child, whether you're black or white. And um, it takes a special kind of young, young man or young lady, and I think it takes a special kind of family to support their children being away at boarding school for five, five or six years. That's what it's really about. But also um, what we're trying to say, and, and from our point of view, is that the educational opportunities our children get right now um, doesn't make them any better than anybody else. Same with me, like I'm not any better than my brothers and sisters. I've just had a, another opportunity. And when I go back home, you know, Mergen and Sherberg is still home. Same with Tennille, you know, she still goes back to home and that's still home. So it doesn't, I, I honestly believe that our children, and we want to make sure that our children keep their feet on the ground because they are who they are and where they are because of their own strength and their own character and the, the values and beliefs they've been given by their own family. And we as an organisation wor are working in partnership to say, you know, let's, let's make some changes for the future. And we can do that strategically by working together with, with communities and families and that throughout Australia. And that's what it, we're really doing. But really it's just a choice about what we offer our families. And, and, um, and yeah, you know, there are, there are going to be some, um, you know, journeys along the way where it's going to be a bit tough. And, you know, we, we go through that as an, as a, as an organisation. But as long as we keep the keep our eye on the goal in regards to what it's going to do for the future when, you know, we, we see young people uh, that will make a difference both now and also in the future then. Mm. Um, I was just wondering what the selection criteria is and what the process is. Do you want an application? Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, you got that. Okay. Um, our application is we have an application form where we have the parents apply, we have the children apply, we ask for school report references and a photo, and then um, our applications close on May the 31st. And then uh, we as an organisation will have a selection committee that will interview children all around Australia. So we, we go around and visit um, families and their communities all around Australia. So we will in sit down with the families to make sure that mum and dad uh, and um, the young lady or the young man is going to co be committed for five or six years. So that's part of our selection process. And then we make a recommendation to the school. So we might say in, in the case with uh, Tanil and Shaquille, uh, we interviewed um, Tanil at, at Charleville. And Tanil was quite lucky that she gave me fifty dollars <laughs> at the in uh, at the interview. So, so that's why Tanil <laughs> is on the scholarship now. So she slipped that on on the table. And um, so um, we make a recommendation to the school, and then we ask Tanil and their mum and dad to come down and have an interview with St Margaret's. So she went to to St Margaret's, and then um, the head of school makes a decision then whether they will accept um, Tanil on the scholarship, like all of our children. And then um, they do an orientation in term four, and then we bring all of our children into uh, one of the boarding schools, like we had a uh, camp this year at St Hilda's, and it's all about boarding school preparation. And then we have a week where we prepare our children for boarding school, and that's only over you know five days. But now, strategically for us, uh, from a, a strategy point of view, we need to prepare our children for seven days, and that seven days looks like what exactly will be happening in a boarding school. So they will do five days of of um, classes, prep at night, sport in the afternoon, um, confiscation of mobile phones, everything will be simulated around boarding school for seven days. And that's what we have to do as an organisation now to prepare our children because we are asking children to go from one community to another. So that's part of our selection process also. Any other questions? Come on, Gwyn, you can ask me a question. Da, da. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to you. Lovely. I guess um, <laughs> save that one. There's a question over here. Yeah, good day, everyone. Um, I was just wondering if you find that there are schools lining up to participate and taking young people in to get an education because I imagine there are great benefits to the rest of the school population too. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. I, I think a lot of schools have been uh, have been supportive of uh, educating Indigenous children over the years for for many many years. And I think uh, now it's just about a partnership where, where schools can do that. And a lot of schools are, have, have done that previously. And I think it's just about you know, working, thinking outside the square of uh, what is going to uh, give them the best opportunities at, both at their schools. And, but it's an education for us as an organisation. We've been very strategic where we've partnered with schools where there haven't been any Indigenous children. And collectively for us, we'd like to to have no, no more than, say, maybe 12 to 14, but we've got 18 children at the moment right now at, at Geelong Grammar School. And, um, you know, so we want to set that where we try and have our children um, to be not on their own. So we have two children starting each year. So whereas in my case, you know, I was at Toowoomba Grammar School on my own for five years, and the only time I seen any Aboriginal people was when I went down the street or um, I had my extended family coming to, to boarding school. So on that level, it's just about... Uh, making sure that our children um, feel comfortable within themselves first and foremost, and then comfortable to be at boarding school. But there, but they are all of our schools, yeah, some are, some of them are lining up, and we're not we're not in w wanting to take on any more schools at this stage. <coughs> so our, our focus is to is to not have a shotgun approach and have a number of little you know, pockets of children all around Australia, but to be very strategic to because long term this is going to be something that we as an organisation with schools can have a strategy for change later on then. We've got 31 right now. Yeah. Any other questions? I wanted to ask the students. Um, it, it's been so great watching uh, the, the details of this program and how it plays out. And you guys, I mean, you're what this is all about. You're right in the middle of it now. And I, I was wondering, how has it been for you? Has there been anything that's surprised you along the way? Or has it been harder than you thought? Like, I guess, how's it going? Oh, I think, um, well, mostly they've really helped, and especially in the transition phase, you know, going from high school to uni, especially for me, they've really made that transition really smooth for me and gave me a lot of help along the way, like in the application process and everything like that. So, if anything, it's been a, a, a bit of a benefit because I know without this, I probably would have had a lot of trouble to try 
and apply for these sort of things. So it's probably a uh, positive thing. Um, as I came from a small country town in Charleville, there was a big um, change going to in the city to a highly standard school in St Margaret's at Ascot. And it was different, but because um, going from a small town to from ha already having achievements, I still followed on and thought to myself that I could do it. Just believing in myself and my family and having an opportunity. And it's at the moment I'm doing sports, education, other curriculars, and it's going great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in I have a microphone, so I'll go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, in terms of the um, the uh, introduction camps, mm. I think that's a great idea. Hopefully, mm. you're not te teaching them how to sneak out after lights out. But <laughs> yeah, you weren't supposed to bring that up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell all my friends you can't. You're not allowed to say tell you. <laughs> no, 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 go on. I know the education side of side of things of, of boarding school, but mm. what about the outside, outside of the formal classrooms? What, how do you see that as? you know, adding to that educational experience? Um, I'll give you one example that, that Gwyn was like. You know, we had a young man, um, Zach Colin Witters. Um, Zach is at, uh, at the Armadale School, and, you know, last year he played um, Oliver, you know, Oliver Twist at, in, in, at the Enmore Theatre in, in Sydney. So that, that's an opportunity where that young man there, like, you know, we've had opportunities where children have gone overseas, and we've got a young lady at the moment that's on, um, on a youth exchange over in New Zealand. And she's from Aversley in Sydney and a, a community from Moree. That's something different that these children, our children have had. You know, I've got a young man, um, Kyle, who was at um, Scots College in Sydney, plays a didgeridoo, is now the pipe major of the pipe band at Scots College in Sydney, and he's travelled, you know, to Europe playing with a pipe band. And this is a young man that um, comes from um, Werris Creek in New South Wales. These are little things that our young people are being exposed to that there's a there's opportunities out there and you know our children as you would know Gwen uh, are busy from the time they get up in the morning to the time they get to, to go to sleep at night but they're just being exposed to so much more of of what's different in either Sherbeg or Warabinder or or Moree or Pilliger or or um, Roma or Jalaka or Bogabilla there's another life out there where you know um, another example is you know, we've got children that are rowing down at Scotch College in Adelaide and there's no rowing club at uh, Halls Creek. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, on that level, you know, we've got children that are being exposed to so much more than just what's happening in their classroom. And this is an education like here, like, you know, Tanil and, and Robbie being able to, you know, not, not every child can say that they've spoken at the State Library in Queensland or every adult in my case too. So I think that's, that's what it's really about. It's just giving our children the best opportunity of being exposed to so much more and then they make some educated choices for the future and that's what we want them to do. And at the end of the day is that, you know, we want them just to be upstanding Australians and that's what we all want to be. Mm. Waverly, can I just, uh, unless there's any other questions and we're nearly out of time, mm -hmm. can you just make some comments on does it take a whole community to educate a child? Yeah, definitely. It makes, uh, you know, in, in our case, um, it does because I think everybody's got a responsibility of... Uh, the betterment of a child, whether that's an Indigenous child or, or a non-Indigenous child. I think we have a responsibility if you can see that for the welfare and safety of a child that if they can, if they've just been given an opportunity, it can, it can make a difference for them. And our motto is it takes a whole community to educate a child. And um, we have fundraising dinners all around Australia. And uh, like uh, we had one two weeks ago that I was talking about, and we had 33 or 32 Indigenous young people at the Sydney dinner at the Town Hall. And... We had 400 guests there at, um, at the dinner, but the reason why is, is, to, is to expose them to the people that are supporting them on that level. And those people are s believing in that, you know, education can make a difference and one person can make a difference in that. And that's all we're trying to do. And, and, uh, and I get back to Mrs Bishop, if it wasn't for her taking a, a keen interest in regards to my education, I certainly wouldn't be here. So it does take a whole community educator because... I, because if Mrs. Bishop didn't do that for me, um, I certainly wouldn't be, I certainly would be most probably working at the Meatworks in Mergen, not talking at the State Library today. Mm. Thank you. Is there any last question? No, no. well, thank you, thank you Waverley, thank you, Tennille, and, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <coughs>
Waverley, I was just going to ask you if this white guy's got it wrong because the Indigenous um, culture, as you just said, um, educate the, the community educates a child. The Asian culture um, educates children and shares the load across the community. Um, mm. Us white guys seem to do it alone. <laughs> yeah. Have we got it wrong? <laughs> oh, no, no, I, d I don't think we've got it wrong. I think it's just, let, it's, it's just saying, you know, let, let's make a contribution, really. And I'd like to think that in, in due course, our Indigenous young people that are on the Yallery Scholarship or others will, will believe in the same motto too, that you know, they will then um, give back in some way, shape or form back to the empowerment of Indigenous children also. And I think it's just a perpetual, like in, in my case, I look at that as a, as a relay where Mrs Bishop has, has passed the baton on to me and now I'm passing it on to our children. And I think that's what we should all do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Waverley, Tanil, and uh, Robbie, for sharing your stories and your experiences. And um, I think you can tell by the questions, the interest, and um, how wonderful the program is. And thank you for sharing your stories. Yeah. And thank, thank you, you very Waverley. much. Thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do that?